The next assembly we're going to discuss is the Watts 008 and 008 PC. And there's a distinct difference between the two of them. Uh, 008 and the PC. The PC stands for a poly coating, meaning that it has a coated plastic body, bronze body, or the 008 is a, uh, just a raw bronze body. And it's a spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker. A lot of times this has been mis represented as a spill proof vacuum breaker. It is not spill proof, it is spill resistant. It is spill resistant on initial charge up. Once it's pressurized, it acts just like a regular pressure vacuum breaker. Anyway, production began around 1994 on this particular design. Here's a picture of the 008 uh, shutoffs. The unique thing about any SVB is there's only one test cock as opposed to two in a pressure vacuum breaker. There is a test cock and then there is a bleed screw, which you can't see. It's on the back side of the valve right here. Here in the cutaway, you can see the picture pointing towards the air bleed screw. But what's unique about an SVB versus a PVB, in a pressure vacuum breaker, normal pressure vacuum breaker, the check, water comes in the bottom, goes and opens the check first. After the check valve is open, then water goes into the air inlet. An SVB is just the opposite. In other words, the first thing that closes in an SVB is the air inlet. As water first comes in, causes the air inlet to close. Once the air inlet's closed, now the check valve opens up. The way it does that has to do with the loads on the check and the air inlet. We know it has to have a minimum one pound load for the check and the air inlet. The thing on an SVB is there has to be a different load on the air inlet and the check. The air inlet has to close first, so it has to have a lower spring load than the check valve, which has a higher spring load. So, as I say, one test cock and one air bleed as opposed to two test cocks. Let's go ahead and take it apart and see what it looks like. Here's the 008 PC, this being a three quarter inch version. It's a cutaway, so you can kind of see what it looks like inside. Um, that PC designation is important to make sure you have it because that's the one that has the poly coated valve like this, which I'll show you in a second. Now, this has an inlet outlet shut off, and is for testing purposes. There's that test cock here, the bleed screw, which would normally be sitting right where the cutaway is, which you can't see. Watts also produces what's called a Model 289. You can see the tag number there where it says 289 on there. Okay, this is the exact same construction without the shutoff valves. And it's sold for the OEM markets and used on some applications for internal on, on specific equipment. So you may see something that looks like this and has a tag number 289, which if you read the catalog says that it's an atmospheric re spill resistant vacuum breaker. Well, it's obviously it's not atmospheric because it's spring loaded from the top. So 289, 008, the PC, important one is for the approved backflow assembly. Shut off our shut off valves, bleed off our test cock and our air bleed, remove our canopy. What it's going to expose is our bonnet assembly. And that's what it looks like this. We're going to unscrew this from the top. As we unscrew it, there'll be slight spring tension from the air inlet. Bonnet, air inlet. Now, the check and air assembly comes out in one piece, just like that. Now you can kind of see that gray color of that that, po that uh, poly coating they have inside the body. They actually take the, the uh, bronze and powder coat on the inside of it and that's what you see so it's a smooth surface. Very important because this retainer as you saw sits inside that body and they had trouble with sometimes it would be hard getting out of the body. Anyway, piece comes out in one piece like this. This will actually come off of the stem and I'll show you how it works. So what you've got is a diaphragm down on the bottom portion of the check assembly. It's a standard check right here, spring loaded, and the air inlet sits like this. So that's what it would look like inside the body. Now, the air inlet has to have a lower load because as it goes to close, the air inlet has to close before the check valve is allowed to open. And that's the critical differences on an SVB. Now, again, this diaphragm on the bottom is important because when the water first comes onto the assembly, the air inlet has to move up to seal across the top, compressing that air inlet spring. And the check isn't opening. So for this to move up and down like that, there has to be some kind of membrane, and that's what this diaphragm does right here. That diaphragm is very important because this retainer that sits over that sits right on the lip of that diaphragm, and that holds it in place. In fact, that's your test because when you put it back together, that this bonnet screws down and pushes right down on that, holding that diaphragm just like that. So when you buy a repair kit for this assembly, there's only two kits. You get the total replacement kit, which is this piece right here, or you get the bonnet assembly, which is this piece here. So there's only two pieces. So it's not repairable as a, as a cartridge, but it's sold as the whole piece. Reassembly is going to be just the reverse. You want to have your 
retainer over this, inserting it in the body. It goes just the one way you'll see that the slot sits there. With the cutaway, you can see down from the top, it has to be all the way down. Once we have it in place, now we get our airlet bonnet, get our airlet spring. Go ahead and have our spring in place, like this. Tighten down on our air inlet. Canopy on top. That's our 008, oops, retainer not in the right place. Anyway, that's our 008 PC. The next assembly we're going to discuss is the Watts 700 double check assembly and the 900 reduced pressure principle assembly. This was produced in sizes 3 quarter through 4 inch and kind of like some other designs we're going to talk about these both the 700 double check and the 900 reduced pressure at the same time. The 700 series the double check was produced all about early 70s like 1973 to 85 ish. The RP 900 series about 1970 to around 88. This assembly on all sizes, both 700 and 900 series, had to be removed from the body for repair. The small sizes had unions on the end so that the assembly could be removed. And here's a breakdown of the assembly, and here's an expanded view of the module of that double check assembly in the small sizes, three quarter through two. And again, uh, unions on the end, bronze body construction. The larger sizes, the two and a half and three were a bronze body construction and the four through six inch were a cast iron body construction. Um, body here, check assemblies in here, expanded view of the check here. There was a door mechanism that we'll show you when we put the valve on the table, show you how to get access to the assembly. So this door actually pivoted on this pin right here and swung out like a regular door and allowed access to the two checks inside. The 900 series also had to be removed from the body for the average repair. Again, unions were on the inlet and outlet of the valve and shutoff stayed in the piping line and the valve itself was removed. What was unique on the RPs though, the 900 series, that special tools were needed for the proper repair. And these proper tools for the three quarters or two inch was one called a tuning fork. Two and a half and three inch required two tools, a tuning fork and a spring compressor. The four through six inch required three special tools, the tuning fork, the spring compressor and the door tool. So two and a half and three, this one required a uh, tuning fork, as I say, and it was unique in that the tuning fork had to be installed into the relief valve discharge right through here and was pushed in across the, the stem assembly. And you wanted to put it in there before you shut the water off, believe it or not. So you would insert that tuning fork through here in through the relief valve, hold the relief valve stem, shut the water off, break the unions and take it out of the valve, and then take it apart uh, with the tuning fork in it, take it out on your workbench to work on it. Kind of different than what we're used to seeing in a lot of the other models. Special tools are required, as I say, to disassemble it properly. On the larger sizes, same was needed. A special tool was used for the uh, assembly and again depending on the size it would be two or three uh, tools that would be needed. The uh, same door mechanism as we saw in the 700 series there's the pivot point and here's where the door opened up. On the four and six there was a special tool that would hold on to the door just in case you were unable to get the tuning fork in it and the tuning fork would fit in through here hold that relief valve stem and check spring compressed until it came out of the body and then you would swing the door open and once it was out you would install the second tool through here which would attach the end of that relief valve stem which would allow you to release the spring tension in a controlled fashion and we'll show you the different tools on the repair process so 700 double check 900 rp special tools absolutely essential for proper repair let's go ahead and take one apart and see what it looks like we're going to talk about the 700 and the 900 series as you can see the body here. The 700 I've got a three quarter inch, 900 I've got a three quarter inch to look at also. Look up close and see what they look like. Um, had to be removed from the body. There were unions on, on the ends of both. Here's the union still on the 900. They're missing on the 700 here. And there was a special tool that was needed to fix the small 900s and it was called a tuning fork. One side would fix the small three quarter one. The other side was used on the larger sizes inch and after two. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the 700s first, the double check series. So here's a three quarter inch version of the 700 series double check. Again, unions were on the inlet and outlet of the valve, inlet here, outlet here, and uh, the shutoff stayed on the piping system. Break the unions and the whole body would come out in one piece. It was a modular constructed unit, had to split the body to get at their internal parts. 
lots of bolts. Go ahead and remove those. I'll do the first check, which is similar to the second check. Cover comes off from the top. Check comes out in one piece. O-ring right here that seals it inside the body. There's the body. Disassemble. Two bolts, one on this side and a nut on this side. Go ahead and use two wrenches to loosen it. Nut comes off. Check disc retainer. Check disc. Check disc, re check disc holder. Check disc. Check disc retainer. Excuse me. Seat O-ring. Stem and check spring. Reassemble is going to be just the reverse. That. Check disc holder. Check disc. Check disc retainer. Back into the stem. Tighten the nut and the bolt tight. Head back up. Make sure it's very tight. Ready to go back in the body. Replace the stem O-ring. I mean the check O-ring which goes onto the check assembly. Back inside. Just like that. And that's the 700 series in the small, small meaning three quarter through two inch. The larger sizes we'll talk about in a minute, a little bit different in construction. Get the bolt back in. And again, that's what the 700 three quarter looks like. The 900 series, let's take a look at the body because it kind of looked unique on the outside. Again, no shutoffs here. They're attached to the piping, but the unions were part of that. And the unions had a special gasket that was replaceable on this because it was a type of union that had to be used over and over again when you disassemble that. So they actually had a gasket type over, uh, uh, union on the end. Um, if you notice, it looks like there's just one flange on the body. Here's a cutaway showing you the check assembly, the relief assembly, which is attached to the check stem, which is unique, and then the second check over here. And there's just a single flange here on the body that would be separated by bolts. So you would shut off your valve, open all your test cocks, break the two unions, and the body would come out in one piece. But before you pulled it out of the body, remember this tuning fork we mentioned, the function of this tuning fork was to be inserted into the drain right here. And where it would be inserted is right in this part here where the relief valve stem is right there. So it was important, there you can see closer, right through there, there where the stem is. So it was important before you shut the water off to have this tuning fork installed in there. It went a lot easier. Since mine's not turned off, yeah, there. If you installed the tuning fork in while the valve was still pressurized, it would be easier. Then you go and shut off your test cocks and drain it and disconnect it with the tuning fork in. Uh, go ahead again, obviously, and disconnect the pressure from it. Then once you get it out, now you can take it on your bench that you're going to work on. Go ahead and remove the bolts. If you don't use the tuning fork, there'll be a lot of spring tension underneath this uh, check flange. If you use the tuning fork, you won't have to worry about the spring because it'll contain that spring tension for you. But let me get these bolts out. Bolts come off. Second bolt. Obviously, there's more than two, but I only got two left. Let me use this. I'll go faster. Okay. Now, once I have the bolts off, the inlet flange will come off in one piece, inlet flange gasket. Now that tuning fork is holding that spring, which right here for my relief spring and my check spring, which are right one inside the other, and holds this in place. Now by putting my hand on top here, I can pull the tuning fork out and release the spring tension in a controlled fashion. The three quarter and one inch is not as bad trying to do it without the tool, but the two inch would be rather difficult on the 900 series if you didn't have the tool. Anyway, stem assembly comes out in one piece, inner spring, here's my relief valve seat right here, and to go ahead and change my second check, you'll notice it in here, I need, just like on the 700 series, it has that one nut on the end, take the nut off, and the parts will come out through the center. Reassemble the second check, just like the 700 series, I go ahead and remove this nut and this here, disassemble it and replace that. Here's the part that causes most of the problem and the stem assembly comes out in one piece, one nut changes this. And it looks like kind of a large diaphragm. And what it actually is, it's our check seat, I mean our check disc on the front, 
and on the back side seals on our relief seat. So this disc has two duties. The front back's going to seal on our relief seat, which sits right here. The front is going to seal on our check seat right here. So in other words, it's pushed against here, and the way water gets through this is that this outer area flexes in and out. And as it flexes in and out, water goes around this and through the body. It had quite a high head loss on it because it had a relatively restricted flow of water going through it. Anyway, then there's the stem o-ring for the relief valve stem here, which was the guide, lower guide of the stem. Reassembly is going to be the reverse. You can rebuy the entire module assembly, or you can rebuild the module with the diaphragm and the o-ring like this. You need your inner relief spring first. This is your check spring. Go ahead and put it in place. Have the stem going through the center. Make sure you line it up properly. And as you line it up, your tuning fork comes in handy here. You want to push it all the way down and insert the tuning fork. Because what it does is it holds it in place. Here's where you can see how that check disc flexes. In other words, when this is installed and pressurized, that disc right on back side bottoms out on the relief valve seat. How your check valve works is this moves back and forth and here's the seating surface that'll seal on across right here. So it moves back and forth just like that to get water into the body. Anyway, kind of different if you're not knowing what you're looking at. Then there's a gasket on the cover. Go ahead and put your cover back on. Now you notice they gave you long extended bolts on this design, which was needed because as you can see, even with the tuning fork, the cover sits up quite a bit. And when you got to that last part, letting the threads down, you had to really push down on it, especially with the two inch versus this little three quarter one here. So go ahead and get your bolts, push, oop, lost my gasket. There. Push down on the flange. Once you got that, go ahead and get your bolts down hand tight. Once you got your bolts hand tight, all the way around, then you can pull your tuning fork out. Now you can go ahead and bolt these down opposite sides, making sure proper uh, seal. Check your union gaskets. If the gaskets are bad, go ahead and have them changed. And then putting it back into the bot, into the piping system. Unions go on the end just like that. And that's the 900 series. This being a three-quarter inch, three-quarter through two, or bronze body, just like that. And that's how you rebuild the smaller ones. The large flange 900 series, this being a three inch one bronze body, four through six inch was cast iron body, required special tools. And what was unique about the special tool that was needed for this is the special tool had to be inserted when the valve was still pressurized, in other words, before you shut it off. So you would walk up to the assembly, go to repair it, insert your tong tool in there, then go ahead and shut the uh, shutoffs off and drain your test cocks to drain the body. Because you wanted to insert this while it was still pressurized. Um, I'll show you why when we get it apart. So walk up, get your tuning fork, and here's what the tuning fork looks like. This, it actually inserts through the relief valve discharge, and it holds on the center of the relief valve stem just like that. So start with that. Once I got that in place, turning it off and disassembling it. What's unique about the 900 series is this door mechanism. If you'll notice, there's a do door with a hinge right here. Yes, the body is bolted together, but we don't take these apart for the average repair. Everything's done through this door mechanism. So once I have my tong tool in place, which what it's doing right now is holding my spring tension inside, I can go ahead and release my, release my check covers like this. Now, one thing that's unique on the four and six inch only, not the two and a half and three, there was a third additional tool. In other words, besides the tuning fork, besides the spring compression tool, which I haven't shown you how to use yet in a minute, the fourth, third tool on the four and six inch was what was called a door tool. There's a large spring holding this check assembly on the door, and that's why we need this retainer in place, because we're going to move this out in a safe fashion and release the spring tension so we can rebuild it. But if you couldn't get this tuning fork in on a 2.5 and 3-inch, you could remove move the bolts and have the door. It would kind of fly open. You could kind of hold it in place. But the 4 and 6-inch was so large and it was re relatively dangerous if you tried that. There was a third tool that mounted on a little clip on the flange and mounted on the door like this and allowed you to release the spring tension if you could not get the tuning fork into the body for some reason. But that was kind of a backup for a proper repair. Anyway, with the 2.5 and, and 3 inch, we just needed the 2, 4 and 6 inch, we needed uh, 3 tools. Back to getting the door open. Once my uh, 
tuning fork in place, I can go ahead and remove my covers. There'll be a slight spring tension on there, which will come off when you get to the end of the bolts like that. And once I've got my bolts released, now I can swing the door out. And you'll see what I was talking about here. And the whole first check and relief stem assembly comes out in one piece. O-ring seal, put that on the side. Now with that tuning fork still in place, what this is going to do is hold the spring tension in a controlled fashion. And by holding it, I can remove my tuning fork, which now allows me to disassemble my stem. So let's go ahead and get this together. There is a female thread in the center of the stem right there. And there's a corresponding male thread on the back of the relief valve stem. So what I want to do is put this in, catch those threads like this, make sure I attach it to the relief valve stem securely. Again, four and six inch especially, had a relatively large spring. Then go ahead and put my wing nut down, which takes the spring tension off of the stem and allows me to easily pull out my tuning fork. So now that I've got the spring tension on here and off the tuning fork, now what I'm going to do is release the spring tension in a controlled fashion. You can see the check spring coming apart slowly. Once I get it to the end, then go ahead and unscrew. That center nut. So I'll unscrew this stem at the back. Now it comes out in one piece just like this. That's my first check in relief valve. Now, second check is mounted inside the body. And as you can see here, there are bolt it's bolted into the body and for the average repair. So with the the ratchet and proper size socket, you're going to remove all these bolts. And the second check comes out in one piece like this. Just like with the 700 series, take one nut off, releases the spring tension on the, go ahead and change the uh, disc on the second check. As I said, the second check, like we saw on the 700 series, remove the one nut, disc holder, check disc, disc retainer, stem, spring, stem o-ring, check seat. Reassembly is just the reverse, replacing stem o-ring, replacing our check disc, our disc retainer, stem o-ring, and tightening that back up. Seal here for back into the body. The first check slash relief valve, and it's attached on one stem, and as I showed you on the smaller one, how the check moves is this disc moves back and forth like that as it rotates back and forth. And here's where the water travels around the outer edge. To disassemble, we have one nut on this side, diaphragm disc comes off, stem o-ring, and guide. On the back side, we have our, our guide O-ring for the relief. Just can pull off, and there's lubricant that goes on that. It comes with the repair kit. Reassembly is going to be just the reverse. And it's going to look just like that. Now let's go ahead and try to put them back into the body. We want to install the second check in first. Notice that there are three little indents on the side. The assembly goes in and you're going to rotate it until you feel it click just like that inside those three little clips. You'll make a little motion and you'll feel it click right in. Once you have that, go ahead and tighten your bolts in, ready to put it back together. Now we have to put the relief valve stem assembly together. Now we're going to take our first check slash relief valve stem assembly, inserting it into the door holding mechanism where our relief valve seat sits. Get our tool, 
we're going to attach it to the back side of our relief valve stem at this point. Tighten it all the way down. Get it done tight back of the stem. Once that's there, then you can work your wing nut down. And what that will do is compress the spring. Now, as you're compressing this spring with the wing nut, pay attention right here where the guide comes in because that can pinch on that relief valve seat. So you want to make sure the guide goes right in the center of the seat. And once it gets in the center, you'll see the bottom stem coming out here. You'll know you've got it incorrectly. Take it all the way down. Because now once we get this compressed all the way down, we're going to flip the door around and put our, tong our tuning fork back in. So I'm going to tip the valve up just so I can show you. O-ring seal goes here. And at this point, you would swing your door in place like this to get your tool in. And once the tool's in place, now you release the wing nut and all of the tension is now on that tuning fork. Now I remove the stud off the back of the relief stem. Comes off in one piece, which now allows me to close my door. I leave the tuning fork in at this point, get my cover bolts, make sure I have them in place. Go ahead and put all your bolts in. Go ahead and tighten down the door. Once you have your bolts tightened on the cover, the tuning fork can come out in one piece. And that's our 3 inch 900 series. Again, 4 through 6 inch would be a cast iron version. The 2.5 and, and 3 is bronze version like this.